Entrance themes have never been a more important part of a wrestler's performance than they are in this era of professional wrestling. Say it! And while there are countless cases of superstars stuck with sucktacular songs, this list only includes music that was immensely more popular than the performer themselves. Number 10, Adam Rose. Beginning his WWE career in NXT as Leo Kruger, a militant South African heel, Adam Rose was repackaged into a Russell Brand-inspired party animal just weeks before his official main roster call-up. Coming to the ring with his eccentric entourage of rosebuds, Adam's theme breakaway was comprised of a catchy hook that was a natural fit for the WWE Universe to hop along to. However, almost as soon as the Exotic Express arrived on the scene, the bloom was off this rose and the party was over. Number 9. Balls Mahoney One of the secret ingredients that made ECW so popular in the late 1990s was their renegade usage of entrance music. See, when you're an underground independent wrestling promotion, you don't really give a hoot about music licensing rights or paying royalties. In fact, you might just say that Paul Heyman had some really big balls to act this way. You got some set of balls on you. Which brings us, of course, to Balls Mahoney. The original hardcore chair swinging freak quickly became a featured performer in EC Dub thanks to this song and the raucous sing alongs that became his trademark. However, I don't mean to break Balls' balls here. Before as over as this anthem was, unfortunately, Balls himself was never able to garner the same amount of testicular enthusiasm outside the land of the extreme. Number 8, Terry and Cross. Karrion Cross had fans freaking out online thanks to his impressive cinematic NXT debut in 2020. Now I say fans were freaking out online because this happened during the COVID-19 pandemic and in front of practically no one at the WWE Performance Center. However, this tune by Def Rebel called Dead Silent is a certified banger and it seemed that before too long, the Herald of Doomsday and the Smoke Show would be bringing their attention-grabbing entrance to the main roster, right? Instead, Cross was called up in 2021 sans Scarlet and jobbed out immediately before being surprisingly future endeavored. And even though the real life husband and wife were eventually rehired by Papa H, the crowd reaction that Cross gets nowadays could be unfortunately characterized as dead silent. Number 7, Brodus Clay. The funky cheesiness of Somebody Call My Mama has helped both Ernest the Cat Miller and even God get jiggy with it. But this theme is most synonymous with the Funkasaurus Brodus Clay. A modern day junkyard dog, if you will, Clay would cut a rug before and after every match, often inviting children to boogie down with him and the Funkadactyls inside the squared circle. The one time Slammy Award winning Best Dancer of the Year even helped turn once monster heel Lord Tensai into a dancing queen, so to speak. But eventually, the music would run out, and the man who now goes by the name Tyrus stopped shaking his groove thing upon his 2014 release. Number 6, Baron Corbin. Let's see, Baron Corbin has been a king, a constable, an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, and a Money in the Bank briefcase holder. But despite all these conquests, Corbin's character has consistently failed to get over with the WWE Universe. This revolving door of gimmicks makes Baron one of the more underutilized talents who definitely deserve better. However, what might make his fans happy is if the E decided to bring back his lone wolf character, along with one of the best themes songs ever produced. Called I Bring the Darkness, this track is also extra special because it represents the last piece of entrance theme music ever created for the company by longtime WWE music producer Jim Johnston. Number 5, Gangrel.
In 1998, at the encouragement of Bruce Prichard and Vince Russo, the WWF debuted Gangrel, a vampire character played by wrestling journeyman David Heath. Now, the garlic gagging grappler was a solid hand inside the squared circle, but Heath never brought anything really extraordinary to the table. That is, except for being given the coolest, most badass entrance ever. Rising from a ring of fire, Gangrel's music, aptly titled Blood, should have been his soundtrack to superstardom. But unfortunately, no no one stuck their neck out for our fangy friend, so he ultimately got lost in the Attitude Era mid-card. Sorry to use a vampire pun here, I know, I suck, but at least hearing this legendary and bloody good entrance theme song from Jim Johnston won't leave a bat taste in your mouth. Number 4, Fandango. Fandango was a veteran of the WWE's developmental system before finally emerging as the winner of the original NXT. However, this victory became a footnote. That is, however, until the smash reality television show Dancing with the Stars became an overnight sensation. Repackaged as an arrogant ballroom dancer and introduced in a series of vignettes that showcased his seductive moves, Fandango cut foot loose into the viral stratosphere thanks to his cha cha la la entrance theme and an organically invented trend known as fandangoing that waltzed across the world wide web faster than you can say foxtrot well at least for a week or two anyways which unfortunately turned this dirty dancer into a one-hit wonder number three the nwo All right, let me explain this ranking here. Now, we can all agree on just how cool the original New World Order concept was. The NWO isn't just one of the greatest stables in wrestling history, but they're also one of the most influential, with an earwormy entrance theme that is still instantly recognized today by even non-wrestling fans. However, leave it to WCW to stumble upon something brilliant, only to go ahead and ruin it. As the NWO ranks grew and grew over time, with the addition of jabronis like Horace Hogan, Stevie Ray, Big Bubba Rogers, and everyone's favorite wrestling superstar Virgil, none of these dudes had any business being a part of the Hall of Fame faction, let alone using this elite track for their entrance music. Number 2, Bobby Roode. Glorious domination, Bobby Roode's Queen-inspired arena rock anthem created by former WWE in-house music production group, The CFOs, was actually written for Freddie Mercury fan Shinsuke Nakamura. However, the King of Strong Style wasn't as keen on the track and left it for Roode, who turned the theme into his livelihood and prostituted the tune any chance he could. The infectious, hook-driven chorus immediately found favor not only with Bobby himself, but also with the contemporary NXT audience, who gave this entrance an added element of gusto. Eventually called up to the main roster out of the blue on a random Tuesday night Smackdown, Rude's whole existence centered solely on the sing-along appeal of this theme. Number 1. The Sandman The only thing anyone remembers about the Sandman's occupation as a professional wrestler is that he hit his head with a beer can and staggered his way through the crowd to the electric sounds of Enter Sandman. Simply put, the 5 minute 14 seconds of Motorhead's cover of Metallica's Enter Sandman is the beginning, the middle, and the end of Jim Fullington's career in the wrestling business. Watching Sandman during his Heyman heyday was awesome as F. However, his post ECW runs were pathetic and worthless without his iconic theme music to headbang along to. 